Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 12.9 stationary points. 12.9 represents chapter 12, section 9 of the Pearson A Level Maths, Pure Maths Year 1 textbook. Let's have a look at the key facts of this section. Consider the following coordinate grids. I've drawn the curve y equal f of x and I've labelled the points a and b on the curve. At a, the tangent is horizontal and at b, the tangent is horizontal. This means that the gradient of the tangent at a and b is zero. Hence why the gradient function dy over dx is equal to zero at a and b. a and b are called turning points, you can also call them stationary points. The reason why you call it stationary points because dy over dx is equal to zero at stationary points. Let's have a look at the formal definition. At a turning point on y equal f of x, dy over dx is equal to zero. A is called a local maximum, B is called a local minimum. At a local maximum, the second derivative d2y over dx squared is less than zero. At a local minimum, the second derivative d2y over dx squared is greater than zero. We call this the second order derivative test. Now we use the second order derivative test to determine the nature of a turning point. Is it a maximum or is it a minimum? Consider the following curve. Now, the point D is a very important point. What we have over here is a concave, and what we have over here is a convex shape. So you can see that the curve goes from concave to convex. D is a point of inflection because the curve changes from concave to convex. That is the formal definition of a point of inflection. We could also have that the curve changes from convex to concave, that will imply that the point from which the change takes place is a point of inflection. At a point of inflection, the second derivative d2y over dx squared is equal to zero. These are the key facts of 12.9 stationary points. I'll be implementing these key facts within this exam style question. Let's have a look at the exam style question. The curve C has equation y equal 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 2. Part A, find dy over dx. Let's go through the solution to part A. So we want to differentiate y with respect to x. Over here, we have a polynomial. How do we differentiate a polynomial? Bring down the power, multiply by the coefficient, and then subtract one from the power. So I'm going to differentiate term by term. The dy over dx is equal to, the first term differentiates to two times three, which is six x to the power 3 take away 1 which is 2. The second term differentiates to minus 5 times 2 which is minus 10. x to the power 2 take away 1 which is 1. We don't need to write 1 here. The third term differentiates to minus 4 times 1 which is minus 4. x to the power 1 take away 1 which is 0 so x to the power 0 is just 1. minus 4 times 1 is just minus 4. A constant differentiates to 0. So in part A dy of dx is equal to 6x squared minus 10x minus 4. Let's have a look at part b. Using the result from part a, find the coordinates of the turning points of c. So in part b, we want the turning points of c. This implies that we are going to solve dy over dx equal to 0 because at turning points, the gradient is zero. So, we've got the dy over dx, which is this quadratic, we set it equal to zero. 6x squared minus 10x minus four equal to zero. So now I need to solve for x. If I do this, I get x equal two, x equal minus one over three. Now I need to work out the corresponding y coordinates. Let's start off with x equal two. I need to substitute x equal two into the y equation. If I do this, I get y equal minus 10. Let's work out the corresponding y coordinate for the x coordinate minus one over three. Substitute this into the y equation. So if I do this, I get y equal 73 over 27. Therefore, turning points on C are the first coordinate is 2 minus 10 and the second coordinate 
is minus a third and 73 over 27. This completes part B of the question. Part C, find d2y over dx squared. So we need to differentiate the dy over dx with respect to x. So we have d2y over dx squared is equal. I'm going to differentiate term by term. The first term differentiates to 12x. The second term differentiates to minus 10. And the final term differentiates to 0. That there is my second order derivative. Part D. Hence or otherwise determine the nature of the turning points of C. Now over here we need to apply the second order derivative test. Let's start off with the first turning point. Is it a maximum or is it a minimum? Let's check. So for part D, we've got this turning point over here. So at 2 minus 10, d2y over dx squared when x is equal to is equal to 12 times 2 minus 10 which is equal to 14 this is more than 0 therefore 2 minus 10 is a when the second derivative is more than 0 the point is a minimum is a minimum point let's have a look at the second turning point which is minus a third, 73 over 27. So at this point over here, the second derivative d2y over dx squared at x equal minus a third, this will equal 12 times minus a third minus 10. This is equal to minus 40, which is less than zero. Now, when the second derivative is less than zero, your point is a maximum. Therefore, minus a third, 73 over 27, is a maximum point. And that there, ladies and gents, completes the exam style question. And this teaching video, 12.9 stationary points. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.